uh, we have we have Joel Friday TV, his uh, his uh, last day, if you will, of the week. Happening soon, happening soon. Joel Friday here. We have American Anchor Baby after Hake. I mean, after uh, Joel Friday TV. It's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. And uh, it's Thursday, the 28th of March. Count down to the end of Women's History Month. <laughs> and I have fun, my opinion. Pretty nice music to share with you. Out of in lo- honor and love and appreciation. Shout out to the ladies. <laughs> One of them who died, she is history. And so I thought it would be appropriate and nice to do it. Really, it's a nice song that I'm going to share with you. But uh, what will we cover? I would like to touch on this uh, Angela Chow story that the key brought to my attention on the J.C. Lee Peterson show. By She bought JLP a coffee, buymeacoffee.com slash JLP talk. She or he or it might be AI, might be a he. I always thought it was a white dude, but some people say otherwise. It doesn't matter. There's this Angela Chow woman, sister-in-law, younger sister-in-law to Mitch McConnell, 50 years old, died. Rest in peace. According to reports, she got drunk and fell into a... drove, or her Tesla backed into a pond to the horror of her friends who called the police and they were not able to rescue her in time. She died. Drunk. Blood alcohol level high. Yes, Hake is demonetized too. But there's a conspiracy theory that she owned the company that was that drove into the pillar of the Baltimore Francis Scott Key Bridge. What a mess. So it's not it's not real. Or at least not according to the reports. Hey, hey. Yes. <laughs> Pardon that strange interruption. That was a uh, JLP said, hey, hey. <laughs> but what else will we cover? Um, there was something else I wanted to hit. Trump's Bible. That's cool. Joe Lieberman died. Rest in peace, Joe Lieberman. Um, and maybe some other things. I've mentioned about three days in a row now for anti-Semitism, phony thing, which is kind of a boring topic. Oh, the kiss! The Spain kiss. The Spanish World Cup kiss. Remember that? It's a big story, kind of, because everybody was freaking out. I covered it a little bit. American Anchor Baby covered it. They want, prosecutors want to throw him in this slammer, this man who supposedly unwantedly kissed a, a woman, a female soccer player in the Spanish team. She, he's the president, or was, or something. And they want to, the prosecutors want to put him in jail for two and a half years. Ridiculous. I've never even watched The Kiss. I think that American Anchor Baby played that kiss on his show. We disavow kissing. (laughs) But in Spain, they're affectionate. They're not like us normal whites. I'm shaking my head. Just part of the attack on men. Because women want to pretend like they're these victims. (laughs) Um... Hey, why can't you be more like Joel and talk about the hard-hitting topics, like relationship stuff? <laughs> Just kidding, we love the skim, says Seesaw. Yeah, so the, so hopefully I'll get to McConnell and the, and the kiss in Spain, or the Spanish kiss prosecution thing. And maybe this other stuff that I've been talking about, okay? But anyway, guys... Let's get right on with the show! Oh, it's the Hey Kapoor, the Hey Kapoor, la la la. Oh, it's the Hey Kapoor, the Hey Kapoor, la la la. Hey guys!
So, how you guys doing? I'm fine. I'm wearing a, uh, is it a wolf? Is it a fox? Is it a, uh, it's a size medium. <laughs> Tell you that much. But it's not one of those size mediums that's excessively, at least not for my taste, tight. Maybe I should grow up and start wearing larges. It's a wolf or a fox or a coyote. 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 Coyotito. From Joshua Tree. I like it. It's orange. I thought it was 100% cotton because it's a solid color. But solid colors are not necessarily 100% cotton. Terrible. And I got it from Joshua Tree. It's a, it's a place. It's, in the, it's a desert town. Um... I'm fine. How are you? How are you guys? I will get to your super chats. I did see that some have come in. You can super chat by going to buymeacoffee.com slash the Hake Report. Or um if you go to the Hake Report.com, uh, there's all the listings of how to super chat there. There's uh, Streamlabs, there's Kofi, Coffee, K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash the Hake Report. And other places. I can't even keep track. Cash App, James Anton Hake on Cash App. James Anton Hake on Cash App. Cool. LA men in their $50 t shirts. <laughs> this is not a $50 t shirt, and it's not from LA. And I, I was born in, I'm not going to tell you where I was born. East of LA. Not too far east, though. I'm live on Rumble. Uh, Odyssey, shout out to the Odyssey crew. Facebook, I think. Let me check out the Facebook crew. Uh, X, shout out to the X people who uh, check me out over there. What else? Um, and other places. Nice. And you can call in 1 775 3773, which is 888 Jesse. As I said, Joel Friday is going to be live after Hake. An American anchor baby after that. Let's dive right into this bridge story. Uh, before I get to calls, you can call in. Um, Mildew Gru says, you impressed me looking into that bridge thing. <laughs> well, I had to be prompted by a super chat. Hake gets educated by the chat because I don't look into stuff for the most part. I just read the CNN morning update and that's that. That's all my news for the day. And a little bit of X, Twitter stuff. Or whatever the I hear on the Jason Lee Peterson show, or American Anchor Baby, or Joel Friday TV, if I'm paying attention. But, uh, as I said, the key, a viewer, supporter of Hake, of JLP, Joel Friday TV, and maybe an Anchor Baby, bought a coffee talking about this conspiracy theory, without calling it that about this Angela Chow woman. Angela Chow. Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law. Mitch McConnell being the rhino, turtle-looking guy who's frozen up recently. He's getting old. And was the Senate Majority Leader? I think something like that. He married an Asian woman. An old white man from Kentucky married an Asian woman. A Chinese woman. And her younger sister, Angela Chow, died at the tender age of 50 years old because she, her Tesla backed into a pond in Texas somewhere. She was at a large gathering, and friends watched her, so-called friends, according to reports, watched her Tesla, one of those electric vehicles, back into a pond. Maybe on its own, she was drunk, according to reports. Look at her. That's an undated photo. She probably didn't look like that being age 50, although the Asians tend to age well. Um, Angela Chow, Mitch McConnell's sister-in-law, was drunk when she drove into the pond, so say police. This is from the far-left extremist outlet, I grant you, AP. So take what they say with a grain of salt, but mostly their judgment of things is wrong. And they're selective of their facts that they present to you. Yes, yes, they are selective of their facts. Because they kiss up to the fake idea of racism and transgender and sexism and all that stuff. 
Uh, AP also reported, wow, online posts erroneously tie Senate Minority Leader, oh, he was Minority Leader, his late sister-in-law to the ship that hit that Baltimore bridge. Show this, the back end of this huge container ship with a little tugboat trailing along behind it. This image is awesome to me. Awe-inspiring. Because those containers on this container ship, if you're watching the video, you're, I'll describe it for the podcast listeners. Um, so AP is attacking the free press, which is you, the people. You guys on social media. The mainstream media hates the people of social media. And yes, you, the people of social media, are sometimes, don't say this word too much, kids, but stupid, because you will fall for stuff that's not true. But they do too. But they look down on you. And also, they don't like you competing with them because a lot of people are getting their news from social media, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook at one point, Instagram, YouTube, and the alternative platforms. People get their news from that. As if you even need news. But people get their information about what's going on in the world from sources other than the mainstream ancient dinosaur evil mainstream media, unchristian media, right? So they hate you. They hate PewDiePie. They call them, you guys, racist and sexist and, and sloppy with your facts. As if they're not sloppy with their facts. But look at this image. I'm, we're looking at the... Overcast day photograph, or late evening, overcast, uh, darkening evening, of a humongous, I'm very impressed, massive boat, the back end of it, I guess it's the back end, with stacks and stacks of containers. And by containers, I don't mean just a little mug. I don't mean this little mug here. This the Hake Report La 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 mug. Also called a water container. No, I mean shipping container. Huge. Not just like a little cardboard box, but these huge like garbage bins. People live in them. <laughs> Sometimes. They're like many, many feet. Or meat or several meters long and wide and tall and there's stacks of them and it's like rows of them, columns of them. Columns is stacks. And then you see a boat that looks like it could hold, it could probably, you see a boat trailing behind it, it looks like it could hold like 10 people. Because that's that doesn't look like a small little boat. It does next to that huge ship though. So that thing allegedly is what, or something like that, allegedly crashed into, according to reports, the bridge. I just, wow, so cool. Some of you guys have seen this stuff. You go to, uh, you go to San Pedro, Long Beach over here, or you go to, maybe you're in Baltimore in those areas. Each one of those containers is 45,000 pounds, says Pelagic six, wow! Pelagic six, whoa! Sh- empty or empty or full? Gentrifying a shipping container. What's wrong with the whites? <laughs> Actually, we put the uh, Section Eight people in them. <laughs> anyway, the homeless bums. The ship turned right into it. Says five 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 six five. Afghanistan, they turned them into barracks. Ooh. Hake's spurging out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of know that. According to reports, there's a video, says Big Mitch 909. I know, but video is no longer proof of anything nowadays, you know? Anyway, um, the claim was people said that this woman who... Uh, Backed into it, and the key said it was six days before. I don't know when she got where she got the six days before, because she died. This Angela Chow woman died, sister-in-law to the white 
senator um, died like February 10th and her body was pulled out February 11th or something like that of this pond in Texas. And she was, you know, a lot of Chinese people. I've known some Chinese, like Chinese, China Chinese. I don't mean people whom we sponsor, whom these churches sponsored to come over here after the Immigration Act of 1965 and this fake refugee stuff and all that mess. I mean the Chinese Chinese who come in here and, like, they ship in Chinese stuff into America. They run Chinese shipping companies. And so that's what this Angela Chow woman maybe was doing. She was this, maybe like a CEO or some in this company. Those Chinese. I've known some Chinese. Shout out to the Chinese. Like Shanghai t- Chinese. Like Mandarin speaking Chinese. I don't mean these Cantonese speaking Chinese from Hong Kong who come over here and live and are like poor and have to live among the blacks and the Hispanics and stuff. I mean the, ch- the Chinese who are like business and bringing ch- Chinese stuff over here. <laughs> That's the type of person I gather this woman was. She ran a shipping company, but it wasn't this one. And people think, oh, maybe she offed. She was offed. The police did investigate it as a criminal case to make sure that it wasn't a criminal case. You have to make sure that it wasn't before you can say, oh, no, it was no foul play. Stoned out of her mind, says Steve C. Well, they did say, I thought it was alcohol, but I don't know. (laughs) The chat's making fun of Hake. And rightly so. Rightly so. Man, uh, show number two, debunk. And I'm not for these fact checkers, by the way. Don't confuse me with being one of these looking down on you internet people fact checkers stuff because a lot of times you guys are right obviously and they're wrong or you're both wrong and who knows look at that look at this boat that and this mangled poor francis scott key bridge francis scott P- key the man who wrote the star spangled banner i guess it's time for a new uh A new national anthem, God Bless the USA, by Lee Greenwood, sponsored by our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, with the God Bless the USA King James Version Bible. Nice. So it's false, they say, that this woman was linked to the Baltimore Bridge collapse. They claim. And it's quite possible. It makes sense. There's a picture of her from 2010 in this number three picture. These Asians, Chinese, coming over here and pushing mess. But anyway, um, shout out to the key for that super chat and prompting Hake to look into this, these two different stories. Mainly the story of this gal who died. What a freak accident. 50 years old, gone too soon. Show the number three there, Hassan. The picture of this gal. What a shame. That's when she was like 37 or so, or 36 or something, 38. 2010. 14 years ago, roughly, give or take. It's a picture of this Asian woman, Chinese woman. No, I'm not going to comment on whatever. So, freak accidents happen. You can lose your life like, like that. Her blood alcohol co- uh, level, according to the chat, Dr. Z Rock in the chat, was 0.233, which is high. A lot of Asians cannot handle their alcohol. Elon made it look like an accident. <laughs> um, if that's true, that's pretty high, because you're supposed to have 0.08. You're not supposed to have 0.08, but not 0.233. That's like quadru- triple what you're supposed to have. 
and you're not even supposed to have .08. That's just the limit to where you're legally drunk in legally inhibited under the influence, according to the law, at least in California, I've heard. She's so mild, Hake refuses to comment, says Carver 531. <laughs> no, she's mildly attractive, or was 14, 13 years ago. Why do you guys believe this news still? I don't understand. To me, this, the news doesn't matter. I don't think. Your, your life matters barely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Her life. And she ran a shipping company. You know, mildly successful uh, Chinese gal. I guess. Rest in peace. Shaking my head. And don't fall for... Uh, don't make these spurious connections, you know? Or if you do, catch yourself. Catch yourself and realize you don't know. And it's sort of silly to get into speculation. People say, oh, the Francis... I'm done with her. Thank you, uh, Hassan. And so is the rest of the world. People are like, oh, the France... I saw somebody in the chat, in the DLive chat, saying, the, they, of course, they took out the Francis Scott Key Bridge, a bridge named after the one who wrote our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, these unchristian people, didn't say unchristian, but said a different word, um, really want to destroy our country. <laughs> they're going to build a new bridge and make it, somebody, somebody else said, they're going to build a new bridge and call it Freddie Gray Bridge or Georgia Floyd Bridge, Georgia Florida Bridge. What a mess, huh? We don't know. John in New York is on the line. John, thank you for calling and holding. What's up? How are you doing? Doing good. Hi. I called the first time, I think it was two days ago. Oh, I'm right on. Good to hear from you again. Here. Thanks for calling again. Yeah, I haven't been following up on his boat thing, you know. Um, but I don't blame you. Know, you. you know what came in, you know what came to my mind is that who inspects these things? I mean, are they investigating... You know, they said it ran out of power. I mean, it's hard for me to digest that. Yeah, I don't know that. E I don't know. I haven't looked into it at all. This I, didn't, I haven't looked into that story at all. Who, but I have. I don't know if they were trying to save it? power, or they were hacked, or they cyber attack, or uh, yeah, yeah, what? The thing that it, this should be the big news. It is big news, but I haven't looked into it. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, go yeah, ahead. I'm thinking. I'm thinking in my mind, well, the way things are going today, because of the takedown of America, all the constituents is against, you know, just all our, our you know, just our whole system, the systematic, the systematic racism uh, uh, narrative or premise, right? Um, yeah. I'm thinking, in all this, right, the people that are supposed to inspect this, they're, they were put into jobs that are very incompetent like affirmative action type of people. A lot of them, and yes. So that's my guess. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, to, oh. to not, to, I mean, that's why, you know, that's So we I, don't, I, I, so you don't know, but this is what you're speculating based on the culture yeah, of, yeah. uh, the kiss-up culture of, and low, low standards. Standards seem to be. Yeah, yeah, low standards, right. I uh, think, I wonder if the standards have always been low, but they're getting, even, they're sinking to new depths. Some people are raising their standards. Other people are just lowering, lowering their standards because of the feeling sorry for people stuff, this right. diversity stuff. It, and, you know, I think it even affects the whites, too. Like, a, when you see it, uh, when you don't see excellence all around you, you lower your own self-expectations sometimes. Right. I'm saying right. you, that the happens. general you. It have, it's a temptation. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a natural way to go. I yeah. mean, like, you know, but, but it takes a disciplined person to really just see that. And yep. then, like, you know, just put red flags on it. Yeah. You know, and not many people are disciplined. A lot of people just either pass the buck or don't want to be bothered with the extra work involved. Right. 
So it's just the nature of, of, of who we are. I mean, we need God to really just help us in those areas. But the way things are going now, it's very lax. That's why we got troubles in the world. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, a common sense has been thrown out the window. Yep. Um, financial strength has been decreased. And uh, because it's going somewhere else, who knows where it's going? We all know uh, that it ain't going in the right places. But, you know, I mean, look, in all in all, to go in a religious point of view, the Bible predicted that in the last days, these things would occur. Yep. Knowledge will increase. If knowledge increases, then people have more access to use knowledge, um, meaning, you know, all the, all the things that uh, the technical things that we can do now to sin to do things wrong. Yeah. So, unless you have a real combat against it, which is the church, then um, we fall prey to these um, incidences. You know? It's not just the church. It's the spirit that gives you self-discipline, you know, the spirit that God gave yeah, yeah, us. Right. That's, I mean, the, yeah. the one who's all real, who are, who are, the one who are real, not religious. Right. You know, this format, you know, just... Yeah, uh, but the church, the too. I, are, I, I agree with you. The church, too. The church is supposed to... Uh, we're, we're, we yeah, are look, the church. Look, look, I don't bash any. I, mean, I don't want to bash. Get into a bashing, but I'm saying that that is. We've been like in America, we've been blessed with the freedoms. God has opened the door to bless us to free with the freedoms to even uh, talk about uh, the gospel and to to reach out to people. Other nations cannot have that. They're all communists. So we're blessed in that. But now you know it's like, where do we draw the line? without freedom in it. Now, now freedom has gotten out of bounds. Yeah, they say free. Yeah, so. They mean freedom to sin and be crazy and and abolish the freedom to call sin, sin, and call crazy, crazy. Yeah, and, and when you mention sin, you mention there's different perspectives of interpretations of sin. Right. Because if you go, right. So, but the Christian believes that in God's eyes what is sin, not in your own eyes. You know what you think is right, but right. now what does God say? What's God's attitude about it? And you read the Bible, you read the Bible, and you know anybody can really understand the Bible. It's not automatic because you need to be, you know, you need to be saturated in a mindset to understand it and, and ask God to understand it because we're still carnal people in the natural, you know. Yeah, and we get but, all um, crazy into our heads. Just look at, look yeah. at this Baltimore <laughs> Bridge story. All the speculation and assumptions and jumping to conclusions about stuff that doesn't even matter. Think about the stuff that matters. We we get that wrong too. Yeah, it's look. You know, it's the time that we live in. But uh, but I do say that it should be investigated upon. But even if it's investigated upon, that uh, the, the bridge my, you mean? Uh, you know, uh, my accusations are correct. Uh -huh. I, mean, I don't know if that. I think that they would never they they would hide it anyway because they don't want to speak the truth about anything. Because yeah, they keep I the, I think the, that's quite uh, possible. You're talking about this investigations into this bridge or into I think so. Yeah, yeah, like the JFK. I I heard a story that Trump was confronted by Judge Napolitano, this man who's affiliated with Fox News. He's Italian. Um, Napolitano Napolitano called Trump one some years back, I guess, and asked him, hey, um, how come you didn't release the information about uh, JFK's assassination, John F. Kennedy, back in the 60s? And <laughs> yeah. he said, oh my God. you know what, I was going to, but if you saw what was the truth was, or the stuff, if you saw what I saw, you would do the same thing I did, meaning you would also not release the information. And so, uh, yeah, they don't tell us what we don't really need to know. And it makes us want to know what they don't, what we don't need to know, and what we don't need to know is that is maybe is maybe how corrupt they are. But we already know they're corrupt, so we don't really need to go into speculation about it. Well, well, look at the corruption. What it led that uh, Dorothy Kilgallen was the only one that stepped up to the place with some, you know, uh, Quinones. I'm not and familiar with that started. with that name or this story. Really, are you talking about JFK thing? Still? Yeah, yeah. Just going on that JFK thing. Yeah. Dorothy Kilgallen, right? I, I disavow it. I pretty much, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, and I disavow it. And I, and I say that, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm just saying I yeah, disavow yeah, it for the sake yeah. of my channel, because who knows? 
<laughs> but anyway, well, you know uh, what, uh, what is, it, it, I don't uh, want to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm saying, like, you know, there's a lot of things that were hidden. The whole point of the conversation with that was that a lot of things are hidden, and yeah. they're going to be kept hidden because of, you know, it's just a deep state of things at the time. You to know, protect the deep power. state will get out, and they'll get you. I mean, that's it. Yeah. But, but in the light of everything, Christians, of, of us all, if the Bible teaches anything, we're not to, like, fear. We're not to fear that. In other words, that you speak your mind out and you can't get, you know, just so consumed with fear. Yeah, because, and you know, fear doesn't mean is, that you always speak your... Not having fear doesn't mean you're just spouting off, not always speaking your mind. No, no, you don't shoot up your mouth. You yeah. just stand on what you believe right. uh, according to what God's Word says, or, even though the opposition is really just abusing you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, that's the whole point where the Bible makes, creates us into individuals to stand. Because, you know, in the natural world, pretty much cowards. We, uh, you know... Yeah, <laughs> but that's but true. That's the, that's the whole thing. If he who endures to the end shall be saved. In other words, there's going to come a time when the heat's going to be turned up as it's being turned up now. That um, you know, God's going to separate the boys from the men here. You know, that's, yeah. that's basically what it is. That's why I really lo- love and appreciate JLP's message to work on yourself and stuff like that. That the, uh, there's all this stuff in the outside world that seems so important. And, and it's it's important, but it's not important to your life. Like you're, you neglect your life looking at the things happening in the world, and you continue um, chasing distractions and not praying without ceasing and stuff like that. You know, that's uh, th- that's why I really like his call to um, be better. <laughs> Uh, well, JLP, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't doubt, I don't doubt, you know, his aspirations to, you know, the, the, to make things better, you know. I, I don't yeah, doubt yeah, yeah. that at all. Um, a lot of things I don't agree with him with, on the basis of of, of some things of even like he's he's a little ignorant on some things. Oh yeah, he has, you know, he's so, he know he you know, he's knowingly <laughs> he and but he knows he doesn't know most of the time. Yeah, yeah, he, he admits it, but he'll probably, but he, but he does do, is that um, sometimes it can get a little bit dangerous because a lot of people are seeking some answers uh, on, on the subject that you know he disagrees with, and they buy into it. But um, it's like a, a lot of things that he would say would probably go against uh, traditional Christianity, and so that's where you know he draws a line a lot. Of Christian uh, doctrine, so um, you know, unless unless you have a real uh, substantiating uh, a, a premise to, to, to have you been to like you know to convince, you know, so it's it's like I'm, I'm thinking about you know what's more what's more stated in the Bible for our forgiveness, what's more stated in the ba- the Bible giving us the power to to do what the what what the Bible is suggesting for us to do, and um, a lot of that has, you know, it, it's the basis on the, on the understanding on how God operates. And God operated in the Old Testament in a certain way. Then he operated now. Now he operates, uh, he, you know, it's just that God worked differently in the Old Covenant ways than he does in the New Covenant ways. What's your but, point? Um, I, you know, it, it's just that um, according to uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, you know, he goes. The thing that I disagree with a lot is that he says that you know the antidote of 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 everything is forgiveness for your mother. You know, so he always goes. He he shows that that's the root of everything, which it um, in some cases it is, but it, in all cases, you know, it ain't. You is know, it because, not your? Uh, is it not? Uh, was it not the case for you? Yeah. For me, it was like yeah. I mean, you had to forgive somebody. Well, me, my mother died at thirty-nine. I had no idea. I had no relationship with my mom. She was th- she, she was thirty-nine, said, you know, and you were a little kid or something, or you were what? No, she was thirty-nine. I was like five years old, four years old, and that. But um, yeah, you know, so I had no kind of qualms against my mom. You but know, four and, and that, five years but, old um, is plenty of time to be wronged by your mother. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I'm, to, to maybe at that time I don't remember anything. Yeah. you know, I just saw that she was just there and. Uh, you know, and she passed away, and that was it. 
But um, the whole point of, is, is that he, he, he frames everything on the basis of that, and then you know, it's like a justification process, when really it's, it's forgiveness to God first. It's like you lose people when, when you when you keep on that turn like on on that premise, then you you you're kind of saying, well, wait a minute, I've been forgiven by God. I know I have to make it right with some people. So you know when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are compelled to do forgiveness, that. forgiving God or forgiven by God. Well, first is first is forgiving. First is going over God forgive me, and then God will show you who the people to forgive. He'll show you, it's like you get a clear understanding of like, well, let me see if I can make this right with somebody. Let me give a call to somebody, maybe approach somebody. I did, I, look, before I was saved, I robbed $20 from the pizza guy because I was on drugs. When I wow. got saved, I was, I was compelled to One go back to him and pay him $20. Nice. I mean, you that's, know. But, that's you know, cool it, you it, found him. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it, I wanted to make things, it was a motive to make things right. I just wanted to be right with God, and some things like but you're, that. But you didn't, God, you didn't oh. harbor some grudge against him, against the pizza no, guy. No, 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 right. no, no. The pizza no, guy is not I, where your sin did. started. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, look, sin, my grudge, the Bible you know, says, the Bible says, and Jesus said it, that if you don't forgive others their sins, God won't forgive right. you yours. And yeah, that so says that's, that's even in the that's in the Lord's you know. prayer. So yeah, forgiveness yeah. So, is important. Yeah. And who's the first person to for, to wrong you, in general? But the mother, who's closest to you and raises you, or, yeah, I mean, or grandmother, or whoever. I mean, but they, but you're, you're just you're just making a you're just making a, a, a speculation that you're assuming that the mother is, I mean, being that... I'm not assuming, I'm just saying you. that's generally yeah. the case. It's, I'm making a general statement, not, a, yeah, well, not yeah, an general, assumption. Yeah. Generally, generally, it could be. It could be, yeah. but, um, yeah, mother's more nurturing, and you're going to have, you know, oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're the closest Spoiling. one to your mother, sure. But um, yep. the only thing is, is that the only thing that sin, you see, sin is, um, you don't realize, even if she did something wrong, it didn't affect you as a child. It's like being baptized. In other words, that you don't know as a child if she did anything wrong. So when the sin is not imputed, it doesn't consider wrong. When she but wrongs you, still you though, you still repent of it anyway. You know, you still what? repent of it. See, sin is only an acknowledge. It's an acknowledgement of your sin. Like you know, let me. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't see what is wrong, <laughs> but then the whole point is that now I acknowledge my sin when it comes to my mind that God puts it there. Then I know I need to get it right. But in just just out of the wind of saying, well, it could be this one's fault and that one's fault, then it's just all speculation. That's why you have to know for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why. That's why. That's why JLP in. encourages people to know themselves and the and the selfishness, the selfish, evil, dark nature in themselves. It's yeah, not, he doesn't call people to the, speculate the, the or just to believe him. You see, but the people don't know that. See, they see what the Bible yeah, they says do. that it's not in a man. See, with the people, like the Bible says, it makes a statement that it's not in yourself. In other words, yeah, it does. Know, no, it's that does not, not say that. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, no, it's Jesus said you yourself. already know the way. No, no, I don't believe that. You don't. In you don't believe words, what like, the Bible by says. By conscience, by no, by conscience, by conscience, you know the way. He gave you a conscience, but it doesn't mean. No, he said you know the way back to the Father. Well, you know the way back to uh, explain to me what you mean. What, what Jesus said. That's what Jesus that? said. He said you already know. I'm trying the way. to see from you already they, know. Wait, wait. The disciples asked him, "Christ, show us the way back to the Father." Oh, and show Jesus, us the way back to the Father. And Jesus said, "You already know the way." And then he said, "I'm and the way, says, the truth, and life." I am and the way, the truth, and, and the he life. said, "I will send you the teacher." The Holy Right. Yeah, who will okay, guide yeah, you so, in all things. So it is in you. Right, but now he was talking to his disciples who he was right with. Are in, we in not with... Words, are, so he, he was wasn't a, talking to he us? He was actually saying... See, but he was actually saying to the, his followers. He was saying to them, I'm here. You already know the way. I know, but he also said, yeah. I'm going to send the teacher. Later on, he, later on, he also right, said, right. I'm going to send the teacher. Because he's got to go to the cross. He's not going to be with them physically. He's not going to be with them physically. But now he's not going to... He's going to be in spirit. So now he has the Holy Spirit inside living in the person right he's with the father but now he's in you and yeah. so that's why the trinity comes into play because it's god and then it's jesus and now it's the holy spirit the three the three have the same mission 
So now in this dispensation of time, it's not Christ living with us physically. It's, it's now him in spirit, and he's living in spirit in us to perform whatever we have to stand, like the things we mentioned, uh, you know, to not fear or uh, to, to have faith uh, in a deprived world in your face. I mean, these are the things, the essential things that a believer needs to be able to connect to, because, and um, that's all part of God. That's and, the and what's your beef with, with JLP about that? He acknowledges the Holy Spirit and Christ and the Father. Well, maybe he does, but he doesn't explain What do you mean, maybe he does? Uh, I, I, to me, it's he, like does. He, he, brings out, he brings out a point that the only redemption is to forgive your mother, he, always gets, he doesn't say that. A conversation of that. <laughs> See, he, you're, yeah, but you're more, in your head. It, now, every time I turn to him, it's more of a conversation of somebody forgiving their mother. Because you and, have to uh, forgive. I, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Yeah, that's true. But then, the whole, the whole, then you're the, in your the then you're in your head about be, saying stuff that he's not saying. Before you could do that, before wait, wait, before you could do that. <laughs> You gotta you gotta go to God in forgiveness. That's the main thing first. What? In other words, I, I can't forgive anybody. You're making I'll hate stuff everybody. Up. But if I redeem myself before God and say, God forgive me, His Spirit comes in me and then gives me um, the drive to do that, the power to do that. But no, the, you know, what you just said is not in the Bible. What Jesse says is in the Bible. Wait, what? No, no. I mean, it is what I said is it is in the Bible. It makes sense. And JLP always says that you, there's more to just forgiving your mother. Well, but I mean, a lot of look, people gloss, a, lot of the, a whole lot of people course, gloss yeah, over forgiveness. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, that's true. I yeah. mean, because they want to sweep it under the rug and right. just say it's okay. That's true. Yeah, it, it is true. It is true. I agree <laughs> Settle that. down, well, James. It's okay to disagree <laughs> with Jesse, says Obvious Globe in the chat. Well, <laughs> so look, anyway. as long as, i tell you one thing. Yeah. The, Wrap it the up. main thing, you know, we can go back and forth. We can disagree to, to agree to disagree and... There's all the other things, but um, the main thing is that if you do if you do agree to something, it should uh, lead you close to the Lord anyway. So that's the whole essence of it all to get close to God in this in this generation, and to and you know and to reach out to people, man. Nice. That's the basic uh, uh, reason why we're on earth to glorify God. You know? So great but, call, um, John in New York. Appreciate you, man. Hey, uh, great talking, and thank you for having me on. Yeah, of course. Call me again sometime. Will do. In New York, John. Take care. Wow. Uh, you can call into JLP with your disagreements, too. It's like, that's better to go to the source. <laughs> um, Alex in New York. I mean, Alex in California is on the line. What's up, Alex in California? It's good to hear from you, man. Thanks for calling and holding. Hola, way. Hey. <laughs> I'm working on my Spanish because uh, you said I was Mexican last time. Oh, that's right. I thought you were Mexican and actually you're white. Yes. Nice. Uh, so earlier this week, Joe said something that shook me up. Still, I'm still shaking right now. You're the one he who called me Hakey Poo. Trump. Yeah, yeah. I've called you a few <laughs> times now. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, Joe from AZ said he thinks he's better than Trump. Yeah. Wasn't that remarkable? And I'm not going to go off on a Trump tangent. I just want to talk about how um, thinking you're better than someone is a huge thing yep. in the, the music community. I mean, it, everybody does it, but it's a huge thing as a musician. Oh, wow. And okay. I was going to get off on my high horse and be like, you know, Joe, you shouldn't be doing that. I used to do that, blah, blah, blah. But then mm -hmm. actually uh, I did something yesterday that I want your opinion on. You could tell me if it was a just thing to do or not. Okay. Um so I was working on my vocals on my album. I'm like nearly done with it. Cool. And I rent a studio where uh, other musicians rent as well. So I'm in the middle of doing my vocals and this drummer comes in in the next room and he starts doing the first beat. Just that. Uh -huh. familiar with that one. Cool. Yeah. And if he's doing that, that means he's a beginner. Cause it's, you know, that's the, that's the first beat. Okay. So interrupting my my uh, vocal session is coming through my microphone and it's ruining my recording session. Oh. And I, I started getting liberal and angry. Yeah. And uh, so what I did was I hopped on my drum set and I can play 240 beats per minute, 64th notes on the kick drum. Whoa. So that, that that sounds like like machine gun. Cool. Yeah. So I I gave him a full half an hour of blast beats at 240 with the 64th 
<laughs> and uh, when I finished, I didn't hear any. Uh, I didn't hear any noise. So then I continued my uh, my recording, and I and I finished it, and I was I was happy about it. I just wanted your opinion if you think that was like a, like a meme. Is that a meme thing to do? I don't know what your spirit was when doing that. It sounded like you. Were, I I kind of know what your spirit was because you're just telling me what your motivation was was to um, rather than tell the guy to be quiet for a while, the manly way. You, uh, you went the passive-aggressive way and played stuff louder and faster and better than him for half an hour. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and the guy, <laughs> Ego Drummer Boy, says Chico Stick. Uh, that was extremely beta, says Chris. I think it kind of was, um, I think you know what, it, I think you know what was in you when you did that. There was a little guilt afterwards when I was on the drive home. You thought you were better but than him. At the same time, <laughs> I, when you said to to talk to him and and tell him to be quiet, and I'm I not saying like you should have done that, but yeah, um, we all I could pay, see like, a man. I pay like 220 it. bucks a pop for this room. I'm sure he pays a lot too. So yeah, I, I feel like that that would be more disrespectful. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna hop on the kit and just blow him away, and uh, <laughs> he'll be done for, and I can finish what I'm doing here. That's funny. Uh, do you think that he heard it? Because if you heard him, he probably heard you. Oh, we, he absolutely heard it. That may be a, oh, an good. issue. Sounds like it could be an issue with the studio if the studio is not soundproofed on these separate studio rooms. Yeah, I mean, you can only get what you get in this life. So if, yeah. if I was paying like two grand for a room, maybe it would be soundproof. But it, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but it, it does it does affect my recording. Uh, of course. Depending on how sensitive the mic is. You know how it is because you're a, you're a mic user. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just, I just, you know, earlier in the week I was going to go off on Joe, like, you know, you can't be thinking you're better than people, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't do that anymore and yada, yada, but here I go and I'm guilty of it like a day later. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that interesting? But I, but That's why you can't look that. down on anybody just because, and, and Joe may not have been trained in this because I think, I feel like I was trained as a kid not to think I was better than anybody. And he may not have been trained from, from childhood. And that's just training. That's not really knowing in your heart. That's not true, like humility or a proper uh, spirit. Right. I'm a. I'm a. I mean, I, I do evil things, but I'm. I consider myself. Um, I have a lot of humility. I, yeah. I try to. Yeah. I'm. I'm very humble. Like, <laughs> and, I, and I think I, you, you learn also from being humble. So someone who smokes you is going to put you in your place, and you know that happens um, in the drum world. You know, you yeah. think you, you spend. Days and days working on something, you're like, yeah, I finally got it, I'm awesome. And then you see a video of some little kid doing it. <laughs> right. Like, oh, man. So, yeah, everybody, I just wanted to say, you know, don't be thinking you're better than everybody. And uh, catch yourself when you're doing it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep working on my Spanish for you. Cool, man. It's a uh, nice call, nice point. Alex in California. Take care, man. All right, have a good one. You too. Bye. It reminds me of this clip that I saw. I saw a YouTube short of... Because I go on YouTube. I don't really go on IG. I should go on IG more. I know. Humble people don't say they're humble, says GG. <laughs> Moses was the most humble man on the, in the world. Um, and so, too, was that American Indian actor Br Br Marlon Brando. Wasn't he American Indian? I never saw Godfather. I don't know if I ever saw him in a, in a movie. But I saw him interviewed in this old footage between him and this lady, reporter, saying, Asian maybe reporter, not sure, saying, you are known or considered by many the best actor alive, something like that. And... Marlon Brando, this act war. Older man, a little bit, getting heavy set. Marlon Brando was the furthest from humble, says Big Mitch 909. Um, and he's like, nah, Tim is the, is the best actor. And I guess his dog is named Tim. I don't know if it was a golden retriever or some, you know, not like a little toy dog. Mar no, Hake, Marlon Brando was not injured. Oh, I thought he sent that woman... That woman, little feather gal, to 
go in front of all those whites at the Oscars and say something about the suffering of the American Indians. Maybe he just felt bad for the Indians, American Indians. My dog is the best actor, and he slaps the dog, and he calls the dog Tim. Not as alpha of a name as Tony. <laughs> JLP's uh, dog was Tony, childhood dog. Brando was a ridiculous man. Okay, you guys are telling me all these things. Don't tell me this, stu- this uh, gossip stuff, David0621. She wasn't American Indian either, says <laughs> Terry Strange. Well, she was mildly attractive. But anyway, she was dressed like a little Indian. But a lot of times when American Indians dress up like Indians, it looks like dress up. It doesn't look like a real get up. Maybe because it's not torn and tattered properly like it would be if you were in the movies. Uh, my dog Tim is a, is a better, uh, or Tim is a better actor, and he slaps the dog. Get out of here. He said, uh, Tim pretends to love me so that I can feed him. (laughs) Something like that. Get out of here, (laughs) he tells the dog. And the woman's like, no, seriously. No, seriously. Kind of reminded me of what JLP says about the dog. The dog pretends to love you because it's hungry. It wants food. It may not even be hungry. It just wants food. Shout out to Marlon Brando, I guess. Rest in peace. I guess he died, right? Um... She's like, no, seriously, you're, you're the best actor, something like that. They say. He's like, everybody's good or valuable or something like that in their own way. Nice liberal statement. But it's also, you know, people have their role in life. It's a waste of time, dumb pursuit to think about the best. Well, he would be saying that. He's an old, he was an old man at this point. He was not a young, ego-filled, competitive, trying-to-be-the-best person. He's our commie talks, is Chris. <laughs> but I kind of liked the point that he was making. It doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter. Maybe because I'm getting up in my 40s. So I don't have that youthful excellence drive to be the best. Like Prefontaine, Steve Prefontaine wanted to be the best, and then he got himself killed. Like Angela Chow, allegedly he drunk dro- drunk drove or something like that. Prefontaine was a runner in the Pacific Northwest, or these other people want to be the best. Pistol Pete, always bouncing the basketball, even in imagine some Pistol Pete bouncing the basketball, dribbling in the basketball in the pews or the seats, watching a movie, and you're trying to watch a movie in the theater, and you hear this guy thumping the basketball. Obnoxious. Go be the best somewhere else. Hake avows mediocrity, says Ned Post. I guess Hake and Marlon Brando are part of the reason that that bridge collapsed, because we, we avow not driving for excellence and having e- the ego to be right. Does it take ego to do stuff right? Kind of like it takes, does it take pride to do it right? Take pride in your work to do it right? Like it takes anger to, to take action to defend yourself or, or fight against evil? Pistol Pete died too? I think this woman beat Pistol Pete. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I guess there's a right and wrong way for everything. A right, a right and wrong way to do all is unto the Lord. Do your best. And a right and wrong way to be like, eh, nobody's better than anybody. I did, Jake. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Pistol Pete Maravich. Um... Let me read a few Super Chats before I get to the music. It's Women's History Month. <laughs> uh, over on X, Justice 4, number 4, Fathers asks, Hey, do you know the Bible verse Jesse read on his show this morning? Well, I just so happened to have taken a 
screenshot of it, and I may even have it in the chat here. Da, 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 da. John 5.25, I speak to you an eternal truth. And I don't know which version this is. Soon the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will arise with life. That's John 5.25. Let me see if I can... Am I able to... Let me see if I can paste it. Boom. Boom. Right there for you. Sir? Uh, let me check over on more Super Chats over here on Rumble. We're all clear on Rumble. D Live, what's up, guys? Thank you for the subscriptions and support. That's cool. Thanks to Linya and Chin and Gregatron for the Streamlabs support. Popcorn Stump Cake, that's a long one. I'm going to gonna have to read it in the next hour. Alex bought three coffees saying, uh, what did Alex say? Thanks for making it clear, Mary Rice Hopkins. Thanks for making it clear, Mary Rice Hopkins. Chickens really do have lips. Because I played that song at the end of the show, and hat tip to the guy who requested it, but I had already prepped it for it. I didn't even, I wasn't even following your request, DNK whatever. I really had already planned it, but I did see your chat. Chicken lips. Come on and use those chicken lips. Buck, 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 buck. Thank you, Alex, with your three coffees. Who also says, Knights of the New Crusade is amazing. Thanks, Hake. And Knights of the New Crusade is the one that, that sings that anti-evolution song, which some of you guys think is a racist song, but it's anti-evolution, saying, uh, there ain't no monkeys in my family tree. Knights of the New Crusade are, were, are slash were a Christian like garage rock band. Jello Biafra, Biafra, Jelly Jello Biafra signed them onto his alternative tentacles label. And I think they really were Christian or are Christian. Like I think they're sincere, but people think they're trolling. And they might be, but I think they might be real. They also saying E is for evil. Don't you know? It came from the lands of hell below. Don't take E. Ecstasy. Don't be chasing thrills. The key bought a coffee saying, thanks for bringing the receipts. Uh, wink face emoji smiling. Well, thank you, the key with your coffee. Yep, you're welcome. Happy to help. The key is the one who asked about the, uh, that we smoke on that information about Angela Chow, who, who uh, died, rest in peace. And those bridge people who got the collapse thing. <laughs> I do like Beastie Boys, Matthew, but it's Women's History Month. And we're coming to the top of the hour here. I will get to more of your calls, 888-775-3773. Many trolls are sincere, Hake. Yes, true. It is, this is a sad one, honestly, speaking of death, because this lady died more recently. This is from the 2002 album Trust from the band called Low, and the track is entitled Point of Disgust. I hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. I'll be right back for hour two. Hang tight.
Another husband wife band. Mimi Parker, vocalist and drummer for acclaimed indie rock band Low, O O W. Died at the age of 55, ovarian cancer back in 2022, November. Rest in peace, Mimi Parker. And Alan Sparhawk, I think, was her husband's name. Alan, A-L-A-N, Sparhawk. They, ban- they formed Low in 1993. Thank you, Low. Mormon band, they were Mormons. It's a type of Christian. It's, some people call it a cult. I didn't think they were the real kind of Christian when I was a kid. <laughs> At least that's what my mother told me. Uh, So rest in peace, Mimi Parker. The liberals liked them, I think. Uh, Wasn't that, it was kind of nice. Kind of nice. Maybe that song gave her cancer. Uh, Too soon? That's so young. Yes, 55 is so young. I agree, Mead. This is not metal at all. This is not Thrash Thursday. It's, it's Women's History Month. Mormons aren't Christians, says Stephen Hall. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I have to give credit to um, Jeff Suffering of 90 Pound Wuss. Don't say Wuss, kids. And of Suffering and the Hideous Thieves. He's the one who told me about Low back when I was in college because they had kind of like dark, dreary, but still Christian, supposedly, anyway, music. A little bit of hopeful, but I don't know. Maybe it was all Satan. Nice. Let me get to Drew in the United States uh, before I get back to the rest of the Super Chats, guys. Drew, thank you for calling and holding. What is up? The sky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, aside from that, I wanted to ask, Hake, are you a Christian? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. How about you? Yes, sir. Have you called my show before, Drew? Um, or is this your first time? So. This is definitely, I think this might be the first time. Right on. Cool. What makes you ask? You've been listening a while. Really? Haven't you been listening to the, to Hake a while or no? I mean, not really. I don't. Uh, I kind of pop in from show to show. Yeah. I've called Joel. I think I might have called JLP a couple times. But um, oh, so you're in the pretty... chat sometimes, but not. You've been in the chat off and on for a while, but you haven't listened. I understand that because when you're in the chat, you're not really listening a lot of the time, for sure. Well, I don't know. No, I haven't even really been in the chat like that. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to call. I I was listening to the JLP uh, show this morning, and somebody called and asked Jesse that question, and it was interesting to see the answer. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you read the Bible, uh, the Christians referred, like, so what happened is in Antioch, you probably know this, in Antioch, people were calling the disciples Christians, because they were like little Christ, followers of Christ. Yep. And they were calling themselves like brothers, saints, and all these other terms. And I think that the word Christian kind of worked its way into the vocabulary of the original church. 
Yeah. And so now people just call themselves Christians. And so it was interesting just to hear that conversation and to see how Jesse dealt with it. So I wanted to see how you view it, because obviously you have your own experience as a as a guy who was raised Christian and has kind of gone on his own walk. And so. Yeah, because what, what JLP of- said, for those who may not have caught it, catch jessieleepeterson.com slash show. The Thursday, May twenty, March twenty eighth, AD twenty twenty four, hour three, I think was the when that call came in. Jesse's this guy asked Jesse Lee, "Are you a Christian?" He said. At first, he said no. He said, "What are you?" I'm a Christian. <laughs> 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 and then he said, "What? Well, I don't identify with. Yeah, I, it's not my identity of a Christian because there is this." He's making a point, I think. And the, yeah. w- the point that I thought that I took from it was he's not team Christian. I'm more team Christian. Um, but he is, he f- his religion is Christianity. Isn't that interesting, though? How, like, even the word Christian can have a worldly connotation to it? Yeah, def- all words have all kinds of meaning, and Satan exploits that fact and turns intellectuals blind and believing stuff that isn't true. No, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I remember, yeah. uh, <clears throat> uh, if you don't mind me telling this brief story. Sure. I was having this uh, this conversation uh, with one of the guys who attends my church, and we were talking about how, like, Jesus being tempted in the wilderness was one of, like, the most significant Bible stories, because, you know, if you read the Old Testament, the same kind of thing happened to Elijah like after everything that happened with Jezebel and uh, the prophets catching on fire, the so-called false prophets catching on fire, Elijah ran into the wilderness and an angel came after like 40 days and 40 nights and gave him bread and provision. And then shortly after... Fed by ravens. You said... Fed by ravens, right? Weren't these black uh, big bird things the ones who came and brought him food? I think I I believe that might be part of the story as well, yeah. but I do remember distinctly. Angels like, did. The Bible says, yeah, the Bible says that it was an angel that came to him and provided him with provision, and it was bread. Okay. The provision was bread, and because of that provision, he was able to make it to the destination that he didn't even know he was seeking, which was eventually meeting with God. So, New Testament comes, and Jesus is in the wilderness for forty days and forty nights, and Satan now shows up. It's not an angel anymore, but Satan is trying to pretend like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, playing by the Old Testament, and I'm the angel that's now going to give Christ the bread. Uh-huh. But Jesus saw through that, and he said, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that passes through the mouth of God. And that shows that, like, it's not only the material that goes into us that provides us with sustenance, it's also the spiritual. Like, the spiritual is what is most important. And, you know, what's even crazier about that is, you know, like, even in having that conversation, I realized that Jesus is the tree of life. And so when you're taking communion in the Eucharist, where Jesus says, you know, eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, and all these things, if you're a worldly person, you might uh, shudder at that, you might cringe at that, because it sounds, you know, like this gruesome act, but really... What God has done is through Jesus, he's reintroduced the tree of life to the people who believe in him. And of course, if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life, which is what the tree of life gives you if, if you were to eat of it. The tree of life being the tr- a reference to the tree in the garden because there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then there was the tree of life. And Eve and Adam took from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil... And so God shut them out of the garden so that they couldn't eat from the tree of life and live. That's based, I Nice. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Bye, right, man. Uh, cool. Great to talk to you. Nice to hear from you. Call me again sometime if you have a wild hair, Drew, in USA. Indeed. Take care. You too. Bye. Speaking of the USA, God bless the USA. I referenced this earlier today on the Hake Report and... On the JLP show, Jesse Lee covered this. Um, I have a couple pictures, I think, in the folder. Trump Bible. 
President Trump, screenshots from his video that JLP played on the Jason Lee Peterson show. Lee Greenwood posted this on his uh, YouTube channel. Lee Greenwood being that old timer, getting up there anyway, musician who's, who uh, wrote that song. I first heard it from like this sort of barbershop quartet. At least I became familiar with it from this sort of barbershop quartet singing his song, God Bless the USA, and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died who gave that life to me, and I proudly stand up next to you and uh, declare her still today, for there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Darn, I was feeling alpha until that song came up, came on. The low song, point of disgust, still trying to recover, says Gigi Cash. So here's a picture of Trump showing the uh, God bless the USA Bible. Do you see it in there? Uh, check it out. We, and it's different from God bless America. Yes, that's correct. God bless the USA Bible. There's our greatest president promoting what's right. Hank butchered it, says him. Mr. Pink, defend her still today. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Hank, when's the last time you took communion or the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist? Every time I eat, I eat to remember. It was probably a couple of years ago I went to the, the old church that I used to go to for like a maybe a Christmas Eve service or something. Uh, yeah, there's our greatest president in his signature suit and tie holding the Holy Bible. God bless the USA with an American flag sort of imprinted on it, embossed on it. Nice. Leather bound. Man fingers, by the way. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's, I think that it's, um, God bless the USA Bible dot com. Yeah. That's how you can get yours if you want it. <laughs> Patriotic Bible. And it's cool because it has, uh, this Bible also features a copy of the handwritten chorus to God bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. Lee is not Asian. He's Southern, I think. Uh, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance, in addition to the King James Version, the trusted King James Version, in large print. Very nice. So shout out to the Boomers, the Gen Xers, the Christians, the King James only people, the Trump supporters, and, uh, and the atheists. Shut up and buy it. <laughs> When's the next men's conference, Hake? Don't know. MAGA rally in Green Bay, Wisconsin on April 2nd, says Greenwall in the chat. Trump is literally Bible thumping. Indeed. Indeed. Right on President Trump and right on Bible. <laughs> Trump got more merch? Asks Ivana. Yes. Um, join church with Jesse Lee Peterson. Uh, tomorrow's Good Friday. We don't have church on Friday, of course. But, uh, but church with Jesse Lee Peterson on Easter Sunday, May 31st, last day of Women's History Month, by the way. Also the Transgender Day of Visibility, or a day of transgender visibility, if you're in Fairfax County, Virginia. I learned that from a JLP appearance that took place yesterday evening on Newsmax 2. According to reports, Fox News, I think, reported that. Fairfax County Board voted 9-0 to zero to ha hold a Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday. Resurrection Sunday, if you're real Christian. If you're really, really Christian. And we shout out the really, really Christian people, too. Yes. 
$60 Bible. And AP and the atheists, the unchristian people are like, oh, Trump is, amid his legal woes, amid mounting legal fees, Trump is selling a, a Bible for $59.99. Well, I, it's not just Trump. It's an organization that is, uh, has licensed, paid licensing fee to CIC Ventures LLC. And that's how they use Trump's name, likeness, and image uh, under in GodBlessTheUSABible.com. So, I mean, oh, you got to make money somehow. He's promoting the thing. So right on. <laughs> there are worse ways to make money. Like having casinos, which Trump, I think it's fake news that Trump ever had cas- any casinos. Maybe he did have it with uh, Taj Mahal, or maybe somebody else does it. I've never heard Trump encouraging people to be, uh, do that thing that I was told as a Christian you're not supposed to do when I was a kid, which is gamble. It's better to do honest work. You know what I mean? $60 is not that bad, says nada, nada, nada. I've paid around that much for a nice leather-bound OJB. Yeah, and it has, it, it may have, like, gold, you know, gold stuff around it. Let me see. Bum, bum, bum. Pages sticked in, sticking. What if my pa- Bible has sticky pages? Are some of the pages in your Bible sticking together? No worries. This is very common with new Bibles that have gold gilding. It's kind of redundant to say gold gilding. Gilding, right? Because gilding means gold uh, covering on it. Gilding around the edges of the paper. You know how the edges of the Bible paper have, like, gold on it? For your convenience, they have provided a link to a YouTube video that does a wonderful job explaining how to break your new Bible in. I, you probably, like, kind of fold it and bend it. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't watch the video. So, nice. Shout out to our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, bringing back Christianity and the Bible That's cool. (laughs) Kevin House says, Trump's campaign with the repeating subliminal message, Trump is from God, over and over, seems slimy to me. Some people are uh, maybe like that, being uh, slimy. Depends on the heart. It depends on the heart and spirit of it. I'm sure that there are a lot of snakes who will join any church organization or a Christian organization or a Christian man and use it for, for their own ego. Women and, and males join Team Christian, like I just talked about with Drew from the USA. God bless the USA Bible. You don't want to. You don't want to get uh, into these ego battles. Oh, Christ is King! Bash in your face! In your face! Christ is King! <laughs> you don't want to be like that. Maybe a little bit, just to be, just to have some fun. But it's like I, like I mentioned that I would get to eventually. Maybe uh, let me get to this anti-Semitism thing because this is funny. Martyr Maid posted this on X. Anti Semite X1. Martyr Maid, he's a guy on X. Uh, knowledgeable of history and stuff like that. I sometimes see his posts. Interesting guy. Jews need Christ like everyone else, he said. I didn't know this guy was a Christian and thought like that. Oh, nice. I guess. And Christians shouldn't discourage them with displays of vulgar anti-Semitism. And he spells it all with one word. One, no hyphen. Come on, martyr maid. I thought you were more based than that. And he is. Haig is just judging him based on his spelling of this word anti-Semitism, which doesn't even exist. But anyway. And no, saying that Jews need Christ is not anti-Semitism. All one word, no hyphen. Kissing up to the people who pushed to make it all one word with no hyphen to make it seem more real or legitimate or something. 
of a of an accusation slash complaint. These victim people. Uh, two criticizing and condemning Israel, even with extreme terms given its Israel's barbaric behavior. Hey, hey, hey! Leave the barbarians alone, and Israel, let them be barbarians. Barbarians for Christ is not anti-Semitism. Criticizing diaspora Jews, Jewish leaders, and organizations. Diaspora being the scattered among the, ma- the nations. Jewish people who are in America or elsewhere in the world. Um, who's, and the organizations like the Evil ADL, maybe. Uh, who support Israel's barbarism out of ethno-religious loyalty. And most of them are not religious. They're just on an ego trip, is not anti-Semitism. Pointing out the greatly disproportionate number of Jewish Americans in high positions of media, finance, and government, and asking whether it influences U.S. policy and media portrayal of Israel, is not anti-Semitism, he says. Whoa, strong words. Five, holding Jewish... So that four one I'll, go, I'll come back to, because somebody, he had to quote tweet somebody about it, who said, it is! Five, holding Jewish family down the street responsible for the behavior of the IDF. Hey, hey, leave the IDF alone. I stand with the IDF. That's the Israeli Defense Forces who are... I'm not going to say the word. Enzing clay. Ethnic A, they say. People say. And I'm not necessarily against that. But anyway, the ADL, evil ADL. I don't stand with the ADL. Oh, whoa, 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 go back. Wait, I got lost. Oh, yeah, you know, you're fine. You did it right. Wow, Hassan is on it. Holding the Jewish family down the street responsible for the behavior of the IDF, the ADL, and APAC. APAC is the org- er- America Islamic, no, not Islamic. America Israel Political Action Committee. Is anti-Semitism. He said it is anti-Semitism. Finally, he said something is so-called anti-Semitism. It's not anti-Semitism. It's just being unfair. It's just uh, being unfair to your neighbor down the street who are Jewish people, (laughs) even if they support him. At the end of the day, hey, don't martyr maid. Come on, you're supposed to be more based than that. He is more based than that. I'm just judging him for him using something that he would be charged a fee for if he were on Bill O'Reilly's show, he would be charged a hundred dollars for using a cliche at the end of what day? At the end of the day. Each person, but he makes a great point here. Each person knows whether there is malice in his heart. Or do you? Do you are you are you just so on a trip that you don't don't want to acknowledge that there's malice in your heart? Uh you know whether you're saying Christ is king in your face. Well, he didn't say in your face. Because you love Jesus so much and want the world to share your joy. <laughs> Isn't that nice? A nice way to say it. Or if you're throwing up a flag, Christ is king, to annoy a, and provoke a rival tribe, he said. Isn't that a f- nice point? Martyr made. They, these people can tweet forever nowadays. Tweets used to have to be pithy, and now they're not. If it's the latter, you're being a... Oops, don't read that word, kids. A uh, boop hole. A, a jerk. And should stop for your own good, if nothing else. And if it's the former, because you love Jesus, it's probably not... E- you're probably not even involved in or aware of this whole debate. And you should keep doing what you're doing, says Martyr Maid. He posted that on the 24th of Feb- of uh, March, A.D. 2024. And so he did this f- follow-up because this person replied to him named Don Wilson, D.N.S. Wilson, L.L.B., a Canadian flag emoji next to his name. <laughs> Shout out to the Canadians. Number four is typically anti-Semitism. Well, that's a little better, but we say there is no such thing as either one. In the same way, people pointing out all the successful white people is typically anti-white rhetoric. 
So says Don Wilson. So he said it's typically anti-Semitic. It's an observation only made, only made, typically he, sa he said, not only ever made, but only typically made to lead inferences that there is a secret cabal. Not necessarily. I, when, I don't know that I've ever pointed out there's like a whole bunch of Jewish people wherever, in whatever place, or unchristian people I, in whatever place. I don't necessarily claim that it's secret. What do you mean? That's an, I don't know. It's not saying, I'm not saying that. Or it, like when Elon Musk said it. It doesn't have to be secret. It's so, it's kind of in your face. If you're, if you happen to notice. I mean, I disavow noticing, of course. That all X people, not X's in Twitter, but all such and such people contribute to, that must be destroyed. So what, destroy some secret cabal? I don't think that's accurate, Mr. Don Wilson. Especially not when you say typically. You're putting words in people's mouth. S mouths. Don't put words in people's mouths. I know it's, you, people are quick to do it. <laughs> Satan is so quick to uh, interpret what you, what you hear that you think somebody said what they didn't actually say. Samuel Urban replied, I don't believe pointing out numeric realities to be anti-white or anti-Jewish, he said. And then so somebody quote tweeted it. He only got two likes. Poor Don Wilson only got two likes and this Samuel Urban got 44 likes. Can we get some equity and diverse? Anyway, show on the last one. Martyr Maid said, not really to its typically anti-Semitism. In Biden's initial cabinet, Jewish Americans were tapped as Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, uh, Deputy Secretary of State, Sherman, whoever that is, Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, a woman, uh, CIA Deputy Director, Cohen, don't know which Cohen, uh, Attorney General, Merrick Garland, Director of National Intelligence, Haynes, whoever that is, White House Chief of Staff, Klain, Sean Klain, something Klain, Ron Klain? <laughs> That's the guy from Die Hard. I just recently saw the Die Hard movies. Or one or two of them. Mayorkas, the Homeland Security guy. Science, tech, policy ad ad director. Lan Lander? Director of cybersecurity. Siza. Nieberger. And countless, count, or countless? Deputies and undersecretaries. If all those cabinet positions were held by people named Chen, Wang, Huang, Zhao, etc., and our government was exhibited an infallible pro-China bias, and we kept sending our military aid to back up, or to military to beat up China's rivals in Asia, and we burned bridges on other allies all over our unconditional support for China, people would be, think that there was more than a little odd and would not make them Sinophobes. Sino is China, China Chinese area. Yeah, I think I agree with you, Martyr Maid, a little bit there. Although I do disavow noticing. Noticing is not good. You don't want to notice. Or if you notice, notice quietly. Don't be like, hey, y yapping. Shut your mouth. Especially since, uh, since you get the hard hand cracked down on you. So... Be quiet. <laughs> but I found it interesting. Thank you, Martyr Maid. Uh, trying to call the Christians to be Christian in their heart, not in just their stances. Not just be team Christian. Right on, Martyr Maid. That's cool. Thank you, Hassan. Speaking of Jewish people, rest in peace, Joe Lieberman. Joe Lieberman died. Did you know that? Rest in peace, Joe Lieberman. There he is, being young. And look at how young. I think that's Al Gore behind him. Look how young and Al and like a not like 
well, he's not that young, but he's relatively young compared to how he looks today. He, today he looks like, kind of like, I hate to say fat. Fat, puffed up, and like, strained, tense, gray. And now he's a brown haired there. Evil Al Gore, how embarrassing. Why would you be a, a male Democrat? A purportedly white male Democrat. Gore. He picked Joseph, Joe Lieberman. Joseph, not the father of Jesus, or, you know, whatever. The first Jewish candidate for a, uh, which nobody noticed, at least I didn't notice. I was, what, 18? Around this time? 19? I think I was 18 when I voted for uh, W. He was my first vote. <laughs> I disavow it, I guess. But it's better than these guys. Had Joe Lieberman may- been allowed to be president, would we have gotten Obama? Maybe we'd be better off had Joe Lieberman <laughs> been allowed to be vice president, I mean. I'm um, shaking my head. So he died at 82, he fell. So they say, guys and gals, ladies, gentlemen, elderly, getting up there in age, even at the tender age of 82, gone too soon, work on your balance and uh, stay alert and aware so you don't fall. Because falls come with a decline in health sometimes. You don't recover from a fall as easily. You can hurt yourself, break a hip, and all kinds of people... People die from falls, oftentimes, or after, in the aftermath of a fall. Their health major decline real fast. So you, you've got to pay attention. You have less, mar- less and less margin for error as, you're, as you age, they say, if, with your physical body. As Al Gore's Democrat running mate in 2000, he was the first Jewish candidate on the national ticket of a major party. And he was a Democrat, and then he turned into a so-called independent, I think. And then, was he an independent when he tapped him to be so-called vice president? Independence. I do not respect independence. <laughs> I mean, I respect them as people, but I don't respect people who think that they're independent-minded or whatever. It's, like, it's a misnomer. So this is from the Washington Compost. He was criticizing Chuck Schumer, by the way, his fellow Jewish person. Yes, he is a person. For, because Chuck Schumer was like, uh, B, we gotta replace BB. Re- probably replace him with somebody worse. Joe and Hadassah. I don't know what Hadassah is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking at this. Banner too. I saw that. I didn't. I don't know what that is. Hadassah. Let me look. H a d a s s a. Hadassah Lieberman. It is his wife. You're right. Seventy six years old, born in Chechia, Prague. The widow. His widow, not his wife. She, since he died. Married him in 1982. They were only married 40 years. So they were in their, she was in her 30s, he was in his 40s, I guess. Nice. He would go on Fox News and he, like I said, he criticized, uh, he criticized who? Chuck Schumer, former Connecticut senator, Senator. Connecticut, what's wrong with New England? Let me show, let me drag this into the folder. This screenshot, it's called screenshot. Oh no, what in the world? It's going into the folder now, Hassan. Because there's a picture of him. He looks pretty old there. But that was, that was, he was 58. There he is more recently, very recently. In front of those bookcases at his home. So-called independent. Former Connecticut senator. 
But there's a, we're looking at a screenshot of him on the, talking to Fox News. RIP Senator Schumer's something, something. We'll rest in peace. Rest in peace, Joe Lieberman. Okay. What else? There was something else I wanted to cover. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, this is crazy to me. Speaking of ungraciousness and team, team woman, go into this Kiss Spain World Cup mess, if you would there, Hassan. I saw this on Call Me Nonsense Network, and I mentioned it in Hake News at the end of the hour one of the Jason Lee Peterson show this morning. Prosecutors seek... 2.5 2.5 year, two and a half year jail term. They want to put him in jail. Who is Spanish soccer boss, they call him, Rubiales. Over supposedly unwanted, they credulously put this in the headline, unwanted World Cup kiss. I'm questioning whether it was unwanted or not. I mean, whether it was unwanted or not, is that, does the punishment fit the crime? Is it even a crime? Is kissing a crime? They call it S-word assault. By the way, speaking of... Speaking of... Uh, speaking of... Catch 12 Friday TV coming up. Let me schedule him. Dropping your morals and values is his uh, assignment, or JLP's assignment, and that's the name of his chat of his uh, live video coming up, Joel Friday TV, coming at ya. On YouTube and IG, I think. So follow Joel Friday TV. But uh, this Rubial is Spanish Chad. I call him a Chad. He, uh... The prosecutors, Spanish prosecutors, I guess, want him in jail for two and a half years. <laughs> Ridiculous. So he, is re- he resigned as president of Spain's football federation. They mean not American football, but globo homo football, soccer, football. Resigned as soccer chief after the so-called unwanted kiss backlash because all these women got all up in their feelings and the- these simps kissing up to them. It's this bald guy in his 40s, maybe, or 50s, possibly. Uh, I have a few other headlines here, pictures of him. (laughs) Spain's Football Federation accused the World Cup winner of lying about the kiss from the president of the football group. At first, he refused to step down amid the kiss controversy. So he, like, grabbed her head. I've only ever seen images, like, still, screenshots, still, you know, still photographs of it. I think American Anchor Baby showed the actual thing. Where he grabs her head and, and kissed her. This woman who has tattoos all over herself. Are you showing it? I don't think you're showing it. Uh, Hassan there, just in preview. Grabbed her head and kissed it. And he didn't kiss her on the forehead. He might have kissed her on the mouth. Don't do that, kids. Nasty. But that's, isn't that kind of Spain? They tried to ruin his life over a hug, says Radulazer in the Twitch chat. That's right. Hake is on Twitch. How passionate was the kiss, though? <laughs> Asks C. Sal. She wanted it, says Mike Gibson. <sighs> Soul snatching. <laughs> That's what the ladies love, says Matthew. Women. And guy. She liked it, says Flatter's Victory. I disavow it. 
I thought that was their culture. I thought, I kind of thought that was too. Grab them by the dome. Yeah, I agree. Europeans do weird stuff. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody, uh, Raj Laser posted um, a, a, a short video that I can't show you guys. But um, let's say he was wrong and and whatever. It didn't, it didn't look right. They were just excited. A crime? They already, he already resigned, which is too far in my opinion. Resigned as president. Resigned as president. The mainstream media is all searching and saying, oh, there's all kinds of stuff I was really hoping for something actually romantic, Ake says, as he sounds. Uh, look at them. Those gals. I think the one in the, on the left, if you're looking at the thing, if you're looking at the, this video, the gal on the left is the one who got kissed. With the tattoos all up and down her arm. He just wanted to kiss in a place that's not tattooed. Um, two and a half years in jail? Come on, prosecutors, you're ridiculous. They're trying to call it sexual assault or something like that? He called it, he called it excessive persecution. I will, I'll say. But that's the woman thing. That's the woman-centered culture. Never touch women. Never touch anyone, GG Cash says. I agree. He should have dipped her like the old sailor picture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he didn't kiss those gums, did he? The mainstream media pretended like these women are victims. Like there's all kinds, there's this culture of sexism or something like that. Which, Mother Nature, God and nature is God. Nature and nature is God, I mean. Itself is, it treats women and men differently. So it, it follows that men and women are to be treated differently. Which would you rather be? Kissed by this guy after you win? Or punched in the face when you're on your phone in New York City by a black? Dude, who, who's a Trump supporter, allegedly, maybe. <laughs> or maybe you are paying attention and you can't stop it because you're a weak woman. Shout out to the weak women. But most of the time, they get you when you're un unawares. They're like these mountain lions, also known as cougars, who, like, go after the weak, the stragglers, the little, the unsuspecting. The knockout game type of people. Dude is proc practically a model. She should be so lucky. I know, I found her slightly less attractive, at least with that smile, that wild smile, than the, uh, than the brown-haired, dirty, uh, sandy blonde-haired gal next to her. And normally I like the, the sort of dark Hispanic-looking gals, too. See that? Which one, except that the other one is kind of, like, scowling a little bit. Come on. But, um, yeah, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. They're groveling over the women. They're kissing up to them, and it's a shame, and it's only increasing. It's encouraging and enabling and increasing their fake victimhood and anger. What a mess. Um... And men don't do that. <laughs> because you know that the culture is against men. The culture is against men. Remember that? I covered this story and I spent a lot of time on it. Maybe twice I covered it or three times. Of this man who was running in some race in like Boston or somewhere. And there was this Armenian gal, young lady, mildly attractive, who was reporting at this race. You know, this road race. 
where he's people are jogging and this white male jogger in his 40s or 50s married father slapped her on the rear and <laughs> he likes anything <laughs> says e12 daniel he slapped her on the and it, it might have slapped her kind of hard you know like um kind of like these sports people do they slap you on the rear and i've never liked that liked them the look of that what are you doing but that's what they do it's like part of the culture i don't think it was boston marathon it might have been was it the boston marathon not to be confused with the bombing which would you rather have the uh Zarnayev brothers bomb your boston marathon with rice cookers and nails and shrapnel or this guy run up and slap you in the or neither it'd be best to have neither ideally but they're going after hard after these after these people who do like mild things this is mild these are mild offenses i can agree they're sort of offenses it's sort of offensive to be slapped in the in the rear i don't who would want that nobody for the most part i think <laughs> um or kissed in the face after a game by a dude who's practically a model <laughs> and you're this gal with tattoos on your face but mildly attractive still i guess except when you're smiling too big They just like to complain. And the evil media is all on board with it. It's taking over the world. This woman evil kiss-up culture. What a shame. Yeah, it's mildly offensive. And meanwhile, they're like feeling sorry for people who do actual full-blown harsh crimes. And, you know, illegal aliens and some of the criminal aliens and, uh, Drug dealers who are doing more than just dealing drugs, uh, let me tell you. As if, as if that's this innocent thing, too. Sometimes they kill drugs. Ever heard of pot? <laughs> These reefer madness people? This lady who cut and stabbed her, her uh, boyfriend to death? Don't be sl sleeping together. It's not good. <laughs> Kevin House in the chat. I don't know if I should read this. It says, I've slapped many of rears. He didn't say rears. LOL, lots of laughs. Let's go. Uh, shaking head emoji. I know. How about gals ones? <laughs> but anyway. I'm shaking my head. But knowing that. Be wise. Don't cross those lines. It's kind of like the whites. Don't be... A, if you get into some run-in with a... Uh, even if you're in the right, or these people with their Second Amendment, where you have a right to defend your home, or yourself, or your family. Even though you have the right, even though God might say, hey, you have the right, or whatever, you're not going to get just judgment from the world or even the prosecutors <laughs> Mike Gibson says my wife gets hers slapped about 50 times a day I'm just saying the strangers and by who <laughs> Mike Gibson <laughs> asks flat earth victory anyway I'm just saying, be careful, because uh, the punishment is not going to fit the crime under a woman. They don't believe in actual uh, punishment fitting the crime. Okay? Well, guys, we're at, um, we're at the end of the show, and I am remiss in not getting the popcorn thump kegs, uh coffee i'll read it out loud i don't i won't be able to respond to it last point i'll make on the housing discrimination thing it seems like you were for neighborhoods being able to decide who they want to live there but then when someone brought up the italian only neighborhood you said they should watch it because trying to preserve something can go wrong no i i was supportive of the 
that thing. But yeah, I, I do say watch it because, but that has nothing to do with the right to uh, protect it. With LGB only, LGBT only neighborhood, you begrudgingly said you guess you'd be okay with it. Whether you agree with the lifestyle is a separate issue to neighborhood rights. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it comes across as though your initial support of it is so that whites could keep black people out. No, that's not my, I mean, yes, but no, that's not my only thing. But yes, that, yes. But then when other groups use it as examples, you have a wait a second. That's not what I was thinking attitude. Uh, it's an interesting whole topic. Thank you, Popcorn Stump Keg, with your coffee. Um, perhaps I'll respond better to it another time. But it's time for, uh, Women's History Month. Little girl singing Children, Children by the Donut Man. I gotta end on time. Joel Friday TV coming up next. Adios, America, and have fun. And bye. <laughs> Terrible. Crank it up. Can you current up? Children, children, nice. come and touch him. Come, come and touch, touch our Bible, Bible friend. Jesus won't prosecute. Jesus, Jesus, come and bless us. Come, come and bless us with your love. Children, children, come and listen. Come and hear of Jesus' love. Invite everybody. everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be great fun. <laughs> great fun. Children, children, come and listen. Come and hear our Jesus love. Children, children, come and see him. Come and see how Jesus loves. Children, children, come and touch him. Come and touch our Bible friend. Jesus, Jesus, come and bless us, come and bless us with your love. Oh, by the way, I think... Lord, there's nothing better than your love. Come and bless us with your love. Yay! I think Lowe is Canadian, by the way, guys. All right, maybe I'm wrong. Colorado. Adios, America. Joel Friday TV coming up next. Bye.